Hello everyone, welcome to Come Touch of Fantasy. My name is Paul, and this is a very special joint review. Joining me are Frankie from Frankie Reads. Hi guys, Frankie Reads here. And Liz from Dancing Lizard. Hello, out there in Bookland. This is Liz over at The Dancing Lizard. And we are reviewing together Behind the Throne by KB Wagers. Behind the Throne by KB Wagers is a political intrigue space opera science fiction book and it all centers around the character Hale. Hale used to be a part of the royal court. She was third in line to be the empress of the entire empire but she ran away when she was 18 years old. She became a smuggler. She became a gun runner. She became notorious for being a bad person. Now, 20 years in the future, she has to go back to the Empire to become heir of the Empire because her sisters were brutally murdered. She now must go back to the Empire, figure out who would kill her sisters, what is going on in this royal court, and help her dying mother. What is very cool about this book is that the Empire is based off of India. Uh, they are the descendants of people from India. So they look like Indian people, they act like it, they wear saris, they have darker skin, they have darker hair. Also, there are a lot of other characters in this book that have dark skin. There's a lot of non-white characters, uh, people with dreadlocks, people with braids, people with different colored hair. And it's really cool to see all this diversity in this book. Liz will now talk about how the book is written. I'm going to talk to you a little bit about the writing style of Behind the Throne by KB Wagers. This is a story that is told in first person point of view from our main character, Hale Bristol. And one of the nice things about the use of first person point of view in this story is that we are not given any eye, we have no idea of what's happened in Hale's absence. So that works really well here as there's kind of this underlying mystery about uh, the death of her father and the death of her sisters and Hale trying to figure out what has happened in her absence before she takes over the throne. One of the nice things about this also is that each of the chapters ended in a way that kind of left me wanting more and so it was easy to just continue on to the next chapter. I thought the dialogue was very well done. It felt very realistic. Uh, it was very funny as well at times and I enjoyed when KB Wagers would throw in some humor in there. Frankie is now going to talk about the matriarchal society and how it made an amazing book. So I'm here to do my portion of the group review of Behind the Throne. And I'll just let you guys know right off the bat, this was an excellent read for me. I really enjoyed it quite a bit. What I really liked about it most was the matriarchal society. I found that to be so interesting. Not only the fact that women were primarily in positions of power, the primary decision makers, as well as in military operations, we saw that women were our military leaders and in like the version of their secret service, you know, for the royal family, it was commonly accepted and known that the primary secret service guards were going to be women because women were considered or are considered in this world to be more trustworthy, to be stronger, to have a better constitution suited to these more difficult tasks. So I really enjoyed seeing sort of the patriarchal society that we live in today and to, you know, much higher degrees in our past, we have seen, um, I enjoyed seeing that sort of flipped on its head. I think that the author did a great job of showing us how power corrupts. So even though, you know, we have this history on earth where women, you know, were subjected to a patriarchal society and there were all these stereotypes and discrimination against women. We see now here out in space, a, at this, on this particular planet, we have developed a matriarchal society. And as a result, the same type of stereotypical 
prejudging comes up in this new society, in this new world that we're living in. And we see some of the leaders making bad choices because they're choosing to trust women just by virtue of the, their womanhood and not allowing men to be in these different positions and rise and, and develop their skills and bring what they have to offer to the table. My favorite part of this book was the relationship between Hale and her bodyguards. Her bodyguards are named Emery and Zinn. Emery and Zinn are actually a couple. Uh, in this special service, a lot of times these pairs end up being a couple together. So it is two men uh, that are basically married. And they are the bodyguards of Hale. And what's interesting is bodyguards are usually females. So even having male bodyguards is kind of taboo in this society. But what's very interesting is that uh, Hale used to be married or together with Emery's brother. So they have this interesting connection where... Emery at first doesn't really know what type of relationship Hale had with his brother, and so there was a lot of distrust there at first. But as the book goes on, they become incredibly close. And Zen, Emery, and Hale form this really tight bond that can't be broken, and they can trust each other with everything. They are in a very intense situation, and they trust each other with their life and it happens so incredibly quick where they just trust each other without no doubt it just ends up becoming this beautiful friendship between these three people and i feel like kb wagers could have actually written a book where hale and emery could have fallen in love and it could have had this like drama with the fact that she used to be with his brother but instead she took a very bold choice and decided to make Emery and Zinn a pair, a couple, together. And I just really applaud KB Wagers for making a book that is more difficult than what other people might have written. And that's what I really love about this book, because she could have taken shortcuts, but she didn't. Here are a few things that the three of us thought weren't that great about this book. So one of the things that I thought could have used some work is that there was quite a chunk of the story within the center that was a little slow. The writing was slow. I felt like there was almost too much build up uh, to essentially kind of an unsatisfactory action-packed ending. Uh, but of course I understand that because this is a series, we're just sort of setting the tone or setting uh, setting up for f uh, future stories. The only thing I would say that I kind of didn't like about this book is that it seemed like the author somewhat overwrote some of the dramatic points and especially like there were a lot of times where she always had to curse about something. Like she always had to have this like really dramatic reaction to almost everything, which was sort of counterpoint to her personality as far as her being a gun runner and wanting to be in the military and really for all intents and purposes being kind of a tomboy. I found those two things to be a little incongruous. I definitely agree with what Liz and Frankie said. I also think that this book is relatively predictable. However, the plot is still really good. And even though it's predictable and you kind of know what's going to happen, it's okay because it is written really well. And it's written better than a lot of other political intrigue books. Another point worth mentioning is that although we are in a first story within a series, there is def there is a very definite story arc here. We have the introduction of our main character as well as some of our larger supporting characters, and we have this build up of the story to the ending. Although I wasn't a huge fan of the ending, I, I feel as though the ending was placed perfectly. I'm always so turned off by stories that have this slow buildup, this huge climax, this sort of happens 
60, 70 pages from the actual end of the story. And I, that didn't happen here. I felt like the ending happened, the, the, the big climax happened, and then the ending was not far away. And it's set up wonderfully for future books. I really like this book. I am looking so forward to her sequel book. Uh, all three of us enjoy this book immensely, and I think you guys would want to check it out. If you like political intrigue books, a strong female main character, and political intrigue that is smart and really works, I think you would like this book. Check this book out. Thought KB Wagers did an excellent job with her debut novel, and I look forward to how her writing will improve by the second novel. So I think that if you're looking for a great story arc, wonderful dialogue, a great buildup, and a little bit of a mystery, I think this is definitely a book you should check out. So um, again, I really enjoyed this book. I'm so glad that, you know, Paul posted on his channel about this book. I'm glad that I joined in reading this book with Paul and Liz and, um, you know, look forward to the next installment in this series. I would like to thank very much so Frankie and Liz for helping me make this video, make this experience great, and buddy reading this book with me. I hope you guys really enjoyed this review because I enjoyed it. I will talk to you guys later. Please subscribe to their channels and uh, add them on Twitter because they are awesome women that really deserve more followers. Thank you so much for watching. Please like, comment, and also subscribe.